I'm going to be teaching you about the chainsaw. It's one of the most essential tools we use out in the field. It's very expensive and we want it to last a long time, so it requires maintenance almost every day. But the most important fact about it is it's very dangerous, which requires the operator to know how to safely operate it. But first, we need to learn all the essential parts of the chainsaw. So let's begin. First, we'll start with the guide bar, which supports and guides the chain. The chain is a loop that consists of cutters, ties, and drive links. Each cutter link contains a tooth, which does the cutting, and a depth gauge, which limits the amount of wood the tooth can cut. Next we have the chain sprocket cover, which covers the chain sprocket and the clutch. Here we have the clutch, which transfers power from the engine to the chain sprocket, which drives the chain around the guide bar. Here we have the oiler, which pushes lubricating oil through the guide bar around the chain. Chain tensioner allows the operator to adjust how tight the chain is around the guide bar. The chain brake is a critical safety feature that stops the chain. Engage by pushing forward and disengage by pulling back. Next we have a chain catcher. This model does not have one, but I can show you on this. We have the chain catcher right here, and if the chain were to break or come off, it's going to catch it before coming at the operator. Next we have the bumper spikes, which holds the chainsaw steady while cutting wood. Here we have the muffler and spark arresting screen. The muffler reduces noise and diverts exhaust away from the operator, while the spark arresting screen prevents sparks from flying out of the muffler. Here we have the oil reservoir, which holds lubricating oil for the bar and chain and must be filled every time you refill the fuel tank. This is the front hand guard. Serves as, uh, protects and prevents the left hand from touching the chain. It also serves as a lever for the chain brake. The front handle must be used with the operator's left hand in order to engage the chain brake if the operator experiences kickback. Next we have the pull cord assembly. By pulling this, you can start the chainsaw. And to make it easier, we can press the decompression valve. The decompression valve releases pressure from the engine. Fuel tank and cap holds a mixture of high octane gasoline and two cycle engine oil. The master control lever puts the chainsaw in the off running, starting, and choke position. The throttle trigger controls the speed of the chainsaw, but can only be activated by pushing down on the throttle trigger lock. The rear handle must be used by the operator's right hand. The rear handle guard protects the operator and the trigger. Carburetor box cover protects the carburetor, air filter, and spark plug.
the air filter keeps debris from flying into the carburetor. Here we have the spark plug, and below we have the carburetor. It is responsible for blending air and fuel at the right mix for the engine. Last, we have the anti-vibration system. The springs located all around the chainsaw, which reduce the strain on the operator by limiting vibrations. I'm going to show you why it's so important to have your right hand on the rear handle and your left hand firmly on the front handle. If you experience kickback, your left hand is going to activate the chain brake and stop the chain. Now let's see what happens if I reverse hands. Your hand, your right hand, is going to be on the side. You experience kickback, nothing to stop the chain from braking. Remember, we want to operate this chainsaw as safely as possible. That's it folks. You got the chainsaw, their parts, and all their functions. <laughs> Dude, the, the not saying um is actually requiring a lot of attention and conscious effort. It totally does.